ओलिक्स नेटवर्क 18 मिशन पोषण भविष्य रोशन Farmers unions across eight states have launched a mega 10-day protest against the government's failure to deliver on promises that were made to the farmers. The protests are being held under the banner of the Rashtriya Kisan Mahasangh, a federation of 130 farmer organizations. Now, the farmers have suspended the supply of vegetables and dairy products and will also stage roadside dharnas along 30 major highways in the country. Manoj Sharma is covering the protests in Bhopal and is with us. Manoj, uh, what are the farmers' demands and how is the situation on ground? as far as madhya pradesh is concerned because you know madhya pradesh is dubious for for that mansoor episode where some six farmers they were killed in police firing on june 6 last year so this year uh, as far as this farmers protest is concerned uh, today is the first day no one toward incident is reported from any part of the state so far but that supply of milk and vegetables it has been affected in certain parts and the most important thing is the price of vegetables in fact it has been doubled or it, it has been thrice in some parts of the state so there would be a uh, interruption in the supply of the vegetables in the state in coming days too and there are multiple uh, demands of the farmers first of all they are demanding for loan waiver what farmers are saying farmers organizations are saying that government policies of the state bjp state government and of the center they are responsible for this situation of the farmers so there should be a loan waiver and farmers should get appropriate price for their crops for the harvest that is their second price and in madhya pradesh one most important demand by the farmers is uh, is withdrawal of the more than 7000 cases against the farmers which have been filed during the last year during the farmers protest right absolutely manoj thank you so much for taking us through those details so manoj they are reporting from bhopal a uh, gst revenue collection for the month of may has come in at over 94000 crore rupees much lower than the 1 lakh crore rupees that was collected in april however the government argues that the numbers are higher than the average monthly gst collection of over 89800 crore rupees in the last financial year timsi jaipuria joins us with further analysis of the numbers timsi a bit of a slowdown in may collections is not worrying the government Well, as you rightly said, it's not worrying the government because government uh, was expecting these numbers. The the numbers that have come in that is ninety four thousand odd crore rupees, which is the total GST revenue collections for the month of April recorded in the month of May, is on the expected lines. Not just this. Let me run across to the break up first. CGST is about fifteen thousand eight hundred odd crore rupees. SGST around twenty one thousand odd crore rupees. IGST a combination of IGST from imports at forty nine thousand odd crore rupees and assess at seventy three hundred odd crore. rupees now remember on the, when you talk of the overall returns the returns are a bit higher that is 62.4 lakh returns have been filed for the month of april in the month of may now this is uh, this was in the earlier month around 60 60 lakh uh, figure so that means the as compliance has improved as evable has rolled out government feels that more compliance coming in more and more people filing their returns would actually help them achieve the monthly average of 1 lakh 10000 odd crore rupees but yes as of today these numbers are falling short of the monthly average which government has budgeted for the current fiscal overall government is gung ho they say they they've already said that these numbers are just what we have seen and would be only in the first few months of the fiscal so let's see let's wait and watch what actually happens when the collections for other months come in on to the banking space where reports early in the day seem to indicate that ICICI bank and ceo uh, chanda kochar was asked to go on indefinite leave however in a statement made to the exchanges the bank has said that reports are incorrect according to the bank statement chanda kochar is on annual leave which was planned in advance the board has also denied that it has appointed any search committee to find her successor as was being uh, speculated by various outlets remember in march the to look into the alleged nexus between the video con group and chanda kochar's husband deepak kochar ritu singh joins us now with a special guest ritu over to you Well, Arun, Arun Dutty, thank you very much. We're in fact joined by a special guest, Mr. Shri Ram Subramaniam, the founder and managing director of InGovern, uh, will be joining us to take this discussion forward. Uh, Mr. Subramaniam, welcome on the show. Uh, you know, uh, you saw ICICI Bank's statement today. Uh, you know, there will, uh, of course, uh, Mrs. Kocha has proceeded on leave while there is an internal inquiry. This comes after the board earlier had, you know, uh, you know, uh, overwhelmingly supported Mrs. Kocha. Do you think earlier when they said that, and now that they're going into this inquiry? 
Supreme Court, did the board act in a haste? Uh, yes, uh, the board uh, obviously uh, in the past uh, should have initiated uh, the inquiry at the first instance itself. Mm. But uh, better late than never. So from that perspective, uh, the board uh, initiating uh, the investigation now is a healthy uh, reassurance for the investors. But uh, given the, despite that, now what they need to further reassure investors mm. that this investigation is conducted by a credible, independent third party and that it is uh, uh, done in a time-bound manner. Hmm. So these two uh, parameters, I think, uh, are important uh, so that the board reassures the investors that this investigation is truly independent. But uh, how material is it for the investors, uh, uh, the fact that an independent inquiry is now being conducted? Because, you know, we know such investigations uh, take a long time. I mean, it will be a long and painful wait, really. So how material will it really be? It is uh, significantly material because uh, the bank today has a huge uh, reputation uh, risk. Hmm. And uh, it is uh, definitely suffered a hit uh, from a reputation perspective. Yeah. I don't think uh, any new investor is going to uh, touch uh, or invest in ICICI Bank uh, uh, if uh, they want to consider investing. In, so, uh, do you uh, do you, do you think? But but do you think the board taking this move to now establish an independent inquiry into the matter is it trying to separate itself from uh, you know its CEO and MDs or any allegations around her to establish its own credibility? Uh, yes, I mean, the board uh, obviously uh, needs to uh, uh, sort of be away from the investigation mm. and uh, uh, be uh, sort of the, the investigation should be done by a third party who is independent. Mm. And the CEO also should not have any overview or any linkage to that uh, third party uh, and investigation. Yeah. What do you make of Mrs. Kocher's statement so far? I mean, that stoic silence that she has maintained on the matter in the several months since the case has really come to light, has that not really helped matters? Or do you think that would have been the best strategy? No, I think, uh, see, obviously, uh, this is an allegation or accusation. And mm. uh, I don't think uh, it would have been right on her part to comment on it. The, the wall lies in the court of the, I would say, the board. And mm. whatever actions the board needs to take, uh, its own reputation uh, is at stake today, not that of uh, uh, so much that of uh, Sanda Kocha. You know, I, th I think in 2001, UTI Bank's then chairman PJ Nayak had, uh, you know, stepped away from the board when there were allegations uh, regarding the merger with the Global Trust Bank, uh, you know, while uh, that uh, inquiry was being conducted. Shouldn't Mrs. Kocha be taking a leaf out of that book, uh, stepping away from the bank while this inquiry is being conducted and not really make a hogwash of this whole inquiry where the bank now states that she's on a planned annual leave? So, uh, obviously, uh, this is a th uh, third party, at least that Arvind Gupta's allegation was a third party, uh, sort of a external uh, whistleblower acquisition. Mm. Uh, so, whereas in the PJNI case, it was a completely different where he, it was uh, sort of a internal, uh, uh, this where he uh, was alleged to have personally benefited or uh, some of his, this one seems to have personally benefited. So, whereas in this case, it's an external third party. So, from that perspective, the situation is different. Uh, but uh, obviously, this personal uh, annual leave versus uh, whether she is going for the full term, obviously, within a few weeks, we'll get to know a personal annual leave obviously will not last for a couple of months. And I guess uh, one will know for sure whether. But if she has gone on a leave which is co-terminus with this investigation period, mm. uh, the bank uh, has lost an opportunity to actually redeem itself in that sense of uh, stand up and say, look, we sent her on a leave. Uh, mm -hmm. And that uh, the board has, and then has lost an opportunity to actually stand up in front of shareholders and uh, say what uh, call is paid is paid. In an exclusive conversation with CNBC TV 18, Walmart's international CEO, Judith McKenna, says the company is fully cooperating with Indian regulators on Flipkart acquisition and is confident of getting all the approvals. Adds that the deal will help increase Walmart's global sourcing from India. Here's a slice of that conversation. There are some concerns being raised about political resistance to the deal. Uh, stakeholders like the Retailers Association raising concerns with the government, possibly even writing to the Competition Commission of India. How worried are you today? 
We, um, first of all, we're really excited about this transaction and very excited about being part of India in a more expanded way than we are today. Um, we have, um, we're confident in the process that will occur. We understand that there are some people who have some views about this, but we're going to comply completely with anything that the authorities ask us for, and we expect this to be a smooth process. Mm -hmm. The only approval that you require is from the Competition Commission of India because this transaction comes under the 100% FDI route, so is that the only the approval that you require from the government? That is the re approval that we require and that's what we're complying with, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, let me talk to you about the India opportunity and specifically about what changes for Flipkart with this investment coming in. Uh, in terms of the operating structure, we're given to understand that not too much is going to change, but in terms of synergies and being able to leverage that, can you give me some sense of what the blueprint looks like over the next few months? Yeah, so you're exactly right in terms of the operating structure that remains as it is today. We're really confident in the team that's in place and we want them to continue to run the business just as they do today. What we're hoping is that we can bring some support to the business you know, in different areas, both from um, Walmart into Flipkart, but Flipkart out to the rest of the world as well. And from an Indian perspective, um, if you think about an area like sourcing, we believe there's opportunities to globally source through Walmart for certain products, but equally we think there's a big opportunity to source out of India back into the rest of the world. It's one of our fastest growing sourcing regions already and we'd like to make sure that we continue to do that. What will the next steps be to operationalize this relationship and this investment, of course, post the clearance coming in from the government? In terms of the next steps, what can we expect and about the board composition as well? Are you awaiting regulatory clearances before you announce the board? Yes, yeah, so uh, clearly the first step is to get competition clearance for this, so anything that we do awaits that clearance. And um, Beyond that, um, we'll start to make some plans as well to buy what we could possibly do to be supportive, and we will wait until that time for the board to be announced, although we fully expect that to be a mix of independent board members, minority um, investors, and Walmart people. On to the latest in the race for Fortis Healthcare. Fortis Healthcare has kick-started fresh bidding process with four interested parties in the fray. Nisha Podar is here with all the details. Nisha, who's in the fray for the company? So looks like uh, that uh, third time around, Fortis Healthcare could be lucky. It is a fresh bid process under a new board under the chairmanship of Ravi Rajakupal. And uh, four bidders have already given their expression of interest for buying out Fortis Healthcare in this new round of bidding process. Now remember that the four candidates are IHH, the Malaysia-based company, India-based Manipal tying up with private equity firm TPG. Then Munjal and Barman had tied up, who are also the winners of last bidding process so they are back in the fray and also remember that radiant life is there probably being backed by another private equity firm KKR what could be a dampener is that the Chinese uh, company Foson has really not entered the fray uh, that particular company with its deep pockets would have infused much more competition but now we are dealing with four companies who have expressed the interest to be part of this bidding process this time remember the fresh board which has been nominated and appointed by the shareholders of Fortis Healthcare have also allowed a due diligence process for 10 days and on 14th of June is when the binding bid will have to be submitted. Now remember, whatever the Fortis Healthcare board decides, the shareholders will have to give their mark of approval for the final deal. So the race for Fortis Healthcare kickstarts once again. Absolutely. Thank you so much for taking us through those details, Nisha. But with that, it is a wrap on this edition of Reporter's Diary. Many thanks for watching, but stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. Coming up next is Commodity Champions.